All right then, my friends. So the first data type I want to look at is strings, which is the most simple data type we can store in Redis. So I could make a key called name, for example, and the value of that would be a string like Yoshi. I could make another key called color and set the value of that to be indigo. So both of these values are simple strings, right? But also if I make another key, for example, age, and I want to store a number for this key, then Redis will also store that as a string. So when we say strings in Redis, we basically mean strings and also numbers stored as strings. And that's something you need to be aware of when you're working with numbers, because if you ever want to fetch a number value like this from Redis, then it's gonna be returned to you in string format. So then let's have a look then at a few commands that we can use for working with strings. All right then, so I'm inside Redis Insight and I've deleted all the data I had already so we can start with a fresh clean database. And I'm gonna to go to the workbench and we'll start creating some data using some simple commands to work with strings. So when we're working with strings, if I want to create a new key value pair, then I use the command set. And it's convention that we use uppercase right here. Now, if you start typing into Redis Insight, it's also gonna show you here what you need, a key and a value in our case. Let me just go back so we can see that set key and value. So the key is the name of the key, obviously, and the value is the value. So I could say set and then name, and it could be Mario. Now, I've not put quotes around this. You can do, but if I don't put quotes around it, it's automatically gonna store this as a string. Let me show you that. I'm gonna say set name is Mario, control enter. We see, okay, if I go back to the data over here and refresh, then we should see this string, the name, and the value is Mario. So it's stored that, right? But if I go back over here and I say set, let's choose something else. Let's say, just say name two, to keep it simple. And I'm gonna say some kind of double barrel name. I don't know, Chun Lee, like that. Press control enter, then we get an error, right? Because there's a space right here. So if you have a space, then we need to wrap that in quotes. So I could say set name two, and it's going to be in quotes, Chun Li, like so. And now it's worked. So now if we go over here and select name two, we can see Chun Li, all right? So that's just something to be aware of. Okay, so what if we want to get back a name from Redis? Well, simple, get. This is when we're working with strings, by the way. There are different commands for working with other data types later on. So set and get are for strings. So I'm gonna say get, and it's going to be name, control enter, and we can see Mario right here. So we got that back, all right? Okay, so how do we delete data? Well, we say del, and then whatever the key name is. So I'm gonna delete name two, control enter, and you get a one back to say what we deleted. We deleted one thing. If we go over here, and you can see already this is none, but if we refresh, it's not gonna be there at all. We just have this one name left now. All right, so what else can we do? We can use M set, and this sets multiple, M, multiple different key value pairs in one command. So I could say set, I don't know, this could be name two, and it's gonna be Yoshi. No quotes because it's one word. You can put quotes if you want. I'm gonna say color is gonna be green, and then we'll say rating is 10, which is a number, right? So we have all the different key value pairs. We have name two is Yoshi. The color, which is a key, is green. That's the value, a rating, a key, and then a number 10, which is the value, right? So this is how we set multiple different key value pairs in one line. So let me add all these, and we can see that's okay. If we go over here and refresh, we should have three more keys with values. Name two, which is Yoshi, a rating, which is 10, and a color, which is green. Now, like I said, it stores numbers as strings. So if I was to get that, let me just say get, and then it was rating, control enter. We can see 10 inside quotations. So that is a string. All right, so what if we want to get multiple values at once? Well, same M and then get this time. So I could get get name and then name two and then rating and we'll press control enter to get all those three. We get Mario, Yoshi, and 10, awesome. Okay, so we can also get maybe a range of characters from a string. So for example, 
I could get the first three characters of the name. And the way we do that is by saying get and then range. And then whatever the key is that we want to get a range of characters from. So in my case, name, which is Mario. And then we can start at zero to get the first character and then go all the way to three. And then if we press control enter here, we get zero, one, two, three. Okay, so we get those four characters to begin with. So that's get range. Um, also, you can work from the end as well. So if I say get range and then it's going to be name again. If I want to get, say, the last few characters, then it's going to go all the way up to minus one. So that would be the second one. Minus one is the last character. And if we go to minus two, that's the second to last character and so forth. So if I say minus three to minus one and press control enter, that gets us the last three characters. This is minus one, minus two over here, I, and then minus three is R. So that's working backwards. Um, we can also set a range of characters. So if I say set range, you can see right here we have the key and then we have the offset. So basically where we're starting from when we're setting the range of characters and then the value. So I could say name, I want to start at two, position two, if you like, and then just add in, I don't know, ABC and control enter. If we go back to the data or we can just get the name right here instead. And we can see now we've overridden a couple of characters in the middle with ABC or at the end rather. Okay. So there's some of the basic things we can do with strings. That's how we create new key value pairs using set. We get them using get. We've got M set and M get. We've got get range and we've got set range. Now let's have a look at what we can do with numbers, which are still stored as strings, but these different commands are really for numbers. So if we remember rightly, we have a rating property over here, which is a number, it's 10, but it's stored as a string, right? So let's go back over here. Now, what if we wanted to increase the rating by one, for example? Well, we can use the command incra and then the key, which is rating, and that's gonna take that value, 10, and it's gonna increase it by one. So even though it's being stored as a string, Redis still knows that it is a number and we can increase it by one. And you can see right here, we get 11 returned, which is what it should have increased to over here, 11, yes. We can also decrease numbers, so we can say decra and then the key, which is rating. And now it's gone back to 10 again, hopefully. Yep, 10. Now, say you wanted to increase something by five. Well, you could run that command five times if you wanted to, or you could say inca and then buy and then whatever you want to increase the amount by or rather first of all the key which is rating and then whatever you want to increase this by so i could say by five if i send that you can see 15 here should be 15 over here and likewise we have decra buy to decrease something by a particular amount as well so rating and then if i want to decrease it by 10 press control enter you see five right here and then five over here, all right? So remember, although Redis always stores numbers as strings under the hood, we can still treat them as numbers in Redis by increasing the value and decreasing the value as well. But if we ever want to get um, a number from Redis, so if I say something like get rating, just always remember it does come back as a string. Now, when it comes to working with strings or any other data type that we cover in this series, there's probably more commands that I'm gonna show you. I wanna just focus on the core commands that you're probably gonna be using 90% of the time, but there are others that I won't get around to covering as well, but that's okay because for each data type, you can get a list of all of the available commands on the docs, which also tells you what each one does. So again, I'm not gonna be covering absolutely every command for each type of data, only the most commonly used ones and occasionally a few others as well. But I will leave the link to these docs down below the video so you can check them out if you want to.